Welcome. <laughs> good morning and good afternoon. And I don't think we have a good evening, but hello to all. And thank you so much for joining us for this global um, women's empowerment principles induction webinar um, that was intended for the web signatories, but also potential signatories are welcome too. So you can learn more about the webs today. So we haven't done these in a while and we are very happy to have you today and happy to we started. The HQ team has teamed up with the UN Women in Asia Pacific Regional Office colleagues um, for the session one of this webinar and very special thanks to all of them. My name is Miwa Park and I am WEBS coordinator at Women's Empowerment Principles Global Secretariat at UN Women HQ and I'm welcoming you today and later walk you through on WEBS how to. This is today's agenda. So we'll hear some opening remarks from Katja Freiwald, the regional lead for women's economic empowerment and migration at the UN Women Asia Pacific Regional Office. After her remarks, you will learn about the seven principles of the webs and the resources and tools um, available to web signatories from two colleagues, Amy Baum and Feroza Sanjana. And Feroza will walk you through the demo of webs gender responsive procurement assessment tool. So please stay focused. And after this, um, I will walk you through on WEBS how to, to answer some of the most frequently asked questions by the signatories. Then we'll answer your questions and close the webinar. So please feel free to write your question in the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen throughout the webinar. And if you'd like to communicate with other participants, please use the chat function. And I can see um, many of you have figured it out. And your questions will be answered during the Q&A session or through the chat throughout the webinar. So please send in your questions. We also want to hear from you. So we prepared a small survey at the end of the webinar. So please kindly fill it out before you leave or on your way out. Um, please note that this webinar is being recorded and later will be uploaded to webs.org website to be shared with web signatories. Um, and later today, we are actually holding session two of this webinar, and it'll also be recorded and shared. Uh, we actually recommend you to check it out as another colleagues from different UN Women offices will be presenting um, about other interesting upcoming web tools. So with that, um, over to Katja to kick us off. Katja, the floor is yours. All right. Warm welcome um, to, to everyone here from um, the UN Women Regional Office um, in Bangkok. And I would like to also extend, obviously, my um, thanks and gratitude to our um, headquarters colleagues to co-organize this um, very important session, um, induction session on the women's empowerment principles. And the reason why I'm saying this is important and this is important for us as regional office here as well, is that we have seen over the past um, years a significant increase of companies um, taking action and making commitments to join the women's empowerment principles, the WEBS community, and really making commitments to implement them across the, the globe. And we have seen, particularly in our region here, a lot of companies um, joining um, the movement. And we thought it's a great idea to really rotate and make sure that we are very inclusive and have these sessions um, in different time zones. So I see also there are different time zones represented when I look in the in the chat colleagues from Korea, South Africa. So it's really great to, to see you um, all here. So maybe just very quickly um, before I hand it over to my two colleagues here out of the regional office to go into much more interesting stuff and very practical um, um, information on the women's empowerment principles and how to really turn them into action into your in your organizations. Maybe just a bit of a reflection from um, me personally. So as Miva kindly introduced um, me, I'm the regional lead here for women's economic empowerment. Um, of UN women in Asia and the Pacific. But I've been working also for a long time in the private sector and been implementing the, the women's empowerment um, principles. And I've been actually very much amazed over the past three years on really the, the private sector action, um, the strengthening of that and the committed companies that we are working with. So we've really seen this kind of um, lifting up um, even in the pandemic, which has been really, um, very kind of heartening for us. At the same time, what we have been also seeing is that there are more and more companies that um, 
really should be um, joining that movement and it's, it's not yet uh, mainstream. So we're really pleased um, to make sure that the companies that are joining here today or the organizations can really help to really understand what are the, the benefits of being part of such a big family of more than 8,000 or almost 8,000 signatories to the women's empowerment principles. What's in for you? How can you really leverage the tools and resources that have been um, created over the, the years in different regional offices and different country offices? So it's really kind of a, a bottom-up approach where we develop jointly together, in many cases, with companies' tools and make sure that then they are um, available across the different um, regions. And that's the purpose of today's um, session of this induction. Um, to really share with you a much more sort of background on the women's empowerment principles, but also giving you very clear guidance in terms of where to find tools, how to use them, um, so to really get you interested and um, enriched um, and a really interested member of the, the WEBS community. And with this, I, I'm really going to leave it here. Um, I'm really keen on hearing myself a little bit more what um, has been developed in different regions as well. And I'll join you later for the Q&A and discussion again. Mm -hmm. But with this, I, I'll hand it over to um, Amy Baum, who is working in, in our team leading um, the WebSworks and um, many more different areas in the regional office here in, uh, in the Bangkok um, UN Women office. Over to you, Amy. Great, thank you so much, Katya, and lovely to join all of you today. It's great to really see so many people from um, all different regions. So I, I know many of you are, if not all of you, are existing web signatories and hopefully know this back and forth, but I'm just gonna give a brief overview of what the webs are, our kind of beloved seven principles. Um, and so I'm just gonna walk you through quickly each principle, but I think in general, as we always say, the webs are a set of principles and a framework offering guidance on advancing gender equality and women's empowerment. And as a business yourself, becoming more responsible across the value chain. So we're not not just looking at the C-suite or office places, but we're looking down at factory floors, into plantations and into your supply chain, and also heavily looking at how you can sustain those efforts with monitoring and reporting. Okay, so web one. Thank you, Miwa, for controlling and changing the slides. It's always a help. Okay, so web principle one is high-level corporate leadership. A lot of people, I think, mistakenly think that this principle means more women in the boardroom. Um, what this principle is actually signaling is that there's corporate leadership behind actions for gender equality. That leadership is taking steps to set high-level commitments, um, make a public commitment for gender equality, signing the WEPs, um, stakeholder engagement with other partners that they might be working on in gender equality, and really infusing throughout the organization the mission of advancing on the webs. And then web principle two. So we kind of always say that web principle two, three, and four kind of fall into the workplace pillar. So there's that leadership key um, anchoring pillar. We know that these efforts go farther when the leader is really driving all of this throughout the organization. And then two, three, and four, we often call the workplace. Um, so principle two, treat all women and men fairly at work without discrimination. So this can cover actions including non-discrimination policies, equal pay and benefits, equal pay for equal work, um, looking at gender sensitive recruitment, promotion and retention policies, how you do all of that um, throughout that cycle. Um, looking at women in leadership and management positions, flexible work policies, which is especially something that's come into the spotlight with COVID. So looking at how you can ensure some of that balance and also support employees with um, care responsibilities. And what principle three, um, this covers employee health, well-being, and safety. Um, so this is really providing all employees, whether this is in office buildings or potentially in factory settings as well, um, that are part of your extended organization, safe working conditions, having zero tolerance policies towards violence and harassment of any kind, including sexual harassment and strong grievance mechanisms in place. Um, this could also be providing paid time off for medical leave, um, access to health care and, uh, and services, and ensuring also that the workplace is a, is a safe place as well um, uh, for everyone to be able to participate in a safe environment. Principle four, 
education and training um, for career advancement. So these are some of the times that we look at women advancing into leadership because of the need to build the pipeline from the beginning. So looking at how you're supporting education and training programs for women employees, whether they're entry level, they're mid-level, or they're um, in the pipeline for leadership. Also looking at putting women into non-traditional roles, looking within the organization and assessing where women haven't been um, in certain roles or in certain functions like procurement potentially, um, where you can get more women into those roles, ensuring that women have equal networking opportunities or opportunities to work in another office in another setting, um, and ensuring um, that there's uh, resources for this as well. Okay, principle five, this is where we go deep in, not deep, well, hopefully, but where we call it kind of more into the supply chain. So principle five is enterprise development, supply chain and marketing practices. Um, and I often think of marketplace as kind of two separate components. So on the one hand, your actual marketing and advertising practices, what you're, what you're presenting externally to the market. So looking at what stereotypes you might be portraying in your marketing or taking steps to make sure you're advertising efforts, even if their job advertisements are gender sensitive and attracting a diverse pool of talent. And then the other pillar is actually looking at your supply chain um, and looking at policies such as if you're um, implementing or assessing where you stand on supplier diversity and gender responsive procurement, how much of your procurement spend is going to women owned businesses or businesses committed to gender equality. You're going to hear a lot more about this later. Um, and also looking at supporting women entrepreneurs throughout the supply chain. And then principle six, going into the community. So also looking at how you're supporting community initiatives and advocacy. Um, looking at the local communities in which you operate and impact, this could be CSR um, activities and commitments. This could also be forming partnerships with local community stakeholders, um, undertaking research or joining an initiative for research or also supporting um, communities that are or families that are part of your work chain to make sure that there's sustainable or comprehensive development um, in areas where you may be working. And then the last principle, I know this is kind of a quick fire one, but um, I know we have a lot to get through. So measurement and reporting, this is this is a separate principle, but it kind of undergirds and underpins all of the other principles. Um, because in order to, as we call it, kind of undertake your web's journey and ensure that you're advancing, you need to be measuring and, and we always encourage transparently reporting. So looking at your gender metrics, looking at what you're tracking, how often you're tracking and whether you're disclosing metrics um, and reporting some of those to your stakeholders, but also publicly. Um, and we'll touch a little bit more on this later. So that's a brief recap of the WEPs. So uh, what can you do with all of this as, as existing or new web signatories? So what we really wanted to present to you today to make sure you can leverage this opportunity and being part of the community is kind of what we call the WEPS toolkit, so to speak. And all of this can be found through WEPS.org, through the global platform or kind of portal, if you like. And this is where we have a whole host of resources, resources to help you advance across these different pillars. So, Sure, thanks Miwa. In the next slide, a few of our key gender equality action tools. Um, the WEPS gender gap analysis tool, this is a great place to start. So this is actually housed on the UN Global Compact website. So WEPS is a joint initiative with UN Women in UN Global Compact. Um, and I think one of my colleagues can probably put the link in the chat if you haven't taken the GAT tool already. It's a fabulous place to start um, to assess where you stand. Uh, also gender action planning modules, providing a step-by-step -step guide um, on how to create a gender action plan for your company. I see we do have a hand raised. Um, I'll just know quickly if you could type the question into the Q&A. Since we're in webinar format, we, we can't allow participants to speak, unfortunately. But if you type the question in the Q&A, we'll make sure we um, come back to it. Um, all sorts of WEPS toolkits that are available, and then also WEPS Learning Hub. Um, 
where you can build your pathway to success. Thanks for Rosa, that's for the GAT tool. So on the next slide, um, we're not gonna take you to the website today, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. And I know everyone will go there right after the call. Um, we have, There's really a whole range of resources that I think a lot of companies sometimes don't know about, um, but that you can access on webs.org. So you go to this resources tab when you log in, you'll see webs tools, webs in action, um, and other other tools. So under the webs tools, um, you'll see I've kind of shown the drop down menu of the different categories. We have research, um, we have webs awards profiles, which are profile pieces of companies that have been given a webs awards. We have some public policies, video recordings. We also have webs in action case studies, um, which provide really in depth. Um, step-by-step uh, -step processes of how companies have implemented a certain webs all sorts of templates and guidance. Webs in action, we have different stories from the field um, where we might feature different web signatories and what they're doing. In other tools, we also have things that are maybe not directly webs branded, but are related to the overall world of web. So we have some tools in the Asia Pacific that we've developed for entrepreneurs and accelerators supporting entrepreneurship organizations um, that are quite interesting. And then another one that I think might be interesting for a lot on the call if you haven't done it yet. We also have this community insights page where web signatories can actually develop a blog as well and update on what they're doing. And if your company also is interested in doing a webs in action case study or a webs leader or a webs ally case study, what we call it, um, you can email us and we can also support you with the process. So a range of resources for you to explore. Um, what I'm gonna do now is hand over to my colleague, Feroza, who's gonna show you a little bit more in depth about some of these resources and how you can get started using them. So over to you, Feroza. Perfect, thank you so much, Amy. Um, uh, I, I, th thanks everyone as well so far for the introduction to the webs, but today I'd like to tell you a bit more about the gender responsive procurement assessment tool. Um, which we have recently jointly programmed onto webs.org and we have launched it in March this year. Um, we're now actively encouraging companies to take this assessment. Um, but just before that, I'd like to quickly note and mention that we also have launched a new gender responsive recruitment uh, tool. And this tool is very useful because it allows companies to assess their current recruitment policy. Um, and it also, offers a checklist where companies can verify their recruitment process and ensure that it's gender responsive. Um, particularly, this checklist includes guidance on the vacancy announcement, the shortlist and interview, as well as the recruitment committee. Um, so just so everyone over here is also aware of, but this tool is also only available to web signatories. Um, so this is also a very useful tool at hand. Um, Maybe then in the next step, I'd like to take you through the gender responsive procurement assessment tool. Um, and just to quickly mention that this tool is really couched in WEBS principle five, as Amy mentioned, which looks at enterprise development, supply chain and marketing practices. And specifically, the tool is linked to that part of principle five that focuses on procuring from women owned and women led businesses, as well as procuring from gender responsive enterprises. Um, so the GRP assessment tool, as mentioned, it's really a practical, free of cost self-assessment that allows companies to assess their progress on policies and practices relating to gender responsive procurement. And it's also available only exclusively to web signatories. Um, the tool itself is consisted of 31 questions, which allow you to input and collect any relevant data to identify gaps and highlight any areas for improvement um, for which you will receive an individual scorecard. This tool can be used as a standalone tool um, on webs.org. And um, just if we could move to the next slide, please. Um, the questions cover five main themes and you will be assigned a specific score based on each of your responses to the questions. Um, all questions are weighted equally. Once you complete the assessment, you will receive a numerical score for each of the five themes along with the highest possible score for reference. And uh, to the next slide, please. 
So there are five question categories. Um, first, you have some general guidance and company information, which is not assessed. But then this is followed by category specific uh, questions on gender equality commitments. It, um, they, they include general questions on um, procurement policy and strategy. In the next category, it, there are questions on internal procurement and supply chain management, followed by a next category on supplier database and reporting. And finally, a subcategory on supplier engagement and diversification. So these are the different question categories which you would be answering in this tool. Um, so how do we use the tool? Um, very practically, there are a couple of steps uh, which you can take. Step one is really in order to access the tool, a company needs to be a web signatory. Um, I won't go exactly into how to become a signatory and also primarily how to log in um, because Miwa will be taking you through that. But in a next step, uh, you would need to familiarize yourself with the questions that are contained in the tool. And to do this, we've also uploaded a short guidance note, which is available on the landing page of the tool itself. And we'll share the tool uh, link in the chat as well. Um, this really contains some very key definitions and terms. And we also have the questions which you can preview um, once you become a web signatory. And if you already are, once you log in, um, you can download it and refer to these questions. And because you have this offline set of questions, you can also assemble your team, including your procurement staff and any other members of your team who have full access to information on your suppliers and corporate policies on procurement. And further to that, you can then gather all the relevant documents you need, um, get uh, any information on your supplier database, on your corporate uh, gender equality policies and any commitments. Um, and then once you do that, you're then ready to fill in the tool. So you can simply click on the button um, for taking the tool um, on the next slide. Yeah, so once you click on uh, the tool link as well, uh, you can simply go to uh, take the tool and I'm also pasting the link to the GRP assessment tool in the chat. Um, once you click on take the tool, this will lead you to the login page. And once you've logged in, you can simply click on take GRP assessment tool. Further to that, um, this is what you'll see when you log in, there's a dashboard. As you can see, this is a test company we have, and I've logged in a couple of times and actually done this, um, uh, done the tool and completed it. But you can see the uh, score that you achieved in previous times. Um, but you can also see what your current uh, state of the uh, of, of of completion is. So you've in this case it says your uh, the tool has been started, but it's also it's about thirty percent complete. Um, it gives you the data for when you started the tool, and you can also continue the tool and take it um, as you need. So um, once you do that, um, what you can a very useful feature actually of this tool is also you can nominate other members for taking the tool. So it's not just that you alone have to do it. You can click nominate on other members and add their email addresses so that they can also access the tool. So once you start the GRP assessment itself, you can simply answer the different questions um, as, in, uh, as on the screen right now. These are just a preview of the different uh, questions that we have. On the right hand side of the screen, you can actually see at which stage of the different question categories are you at. Um, and then answer the different multiple choice questions. And you can also save and complete uh, the tool later. So you can save your progress as you go. Um, once you're ready to submit, you can simply uh, click on submit, as you can see here on screen. And this then in turn leads you to your score. Um, this score is a very useful indicator for you to start reviewing where you stand on your GRP journey and then also to start thinking about the different actions that you can take. As you can see on screen, the score here is 38 and we have different score bands for you to actually place where you stand. So uh, in this case, you have um, 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 the score being 38, it's an improver. So we have different levels. So we have beginner, improver, achiever and leader. And with each of these bands, you can identify specific actions that you can take as a next step. We also have uh, a lot of resources available on webs.org for you to start um, thinking in these directions. Finally, you can also download your scores and results as a PDF. And this is also a very useful feature because per individual question, you can actually compare and see 
where you stand in terms of beginner, improver, achiever, or leader for each of the individual questions, and these are color coded. Um, so that really is the GRP assessment tool in a nutshell. Um, and we really encourage you to also start taking it. We have a YouTube demo available online um, for you, which summarizes very much what we, uh, this, uh, the demo I just did. So thank you very much. And I'd like to hand it back to Nirvana. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Verosa and Amy and Katja for explaining about the principles and walking us through the exciting tool. So <clears throat> visit www.webs.org and you can do all this and I'll actually go into how do we do that, right? Um, so let me take over the stage to walk you through some of the most um, frequently asked questions to the WEBS um, Secretariat uh, by giving you some practical information for your WEBS journey. First, on how to create an account to manage your company's profile and how to report on your company's progress. So there are a range of things you can do on webs.org as a logged in user. Um, we are working on developing new tools that are available for web signatories only. So by creating webs account, you can manage um, to do all these tools and manage your profile page without emailing the secretariat or you and woman team back and forth. Um, so I wanted to highlight or emphasize that Becoming a web signatory does not automatically create a login account for you to use it on webs.org website. You need to first create an account to log into your webs account. So we've actually seen some companies figuring out and some are um, struggling. So that's why we prepared this. So hopefully we can walk you through on um, that. Another an important thing is that um, you can use any of the emails that you provided during web application process um, those were CEO's email, primary and secondary email. So you cannot use any other email at this stage, but I'll show you how you could add in um, additional emails um, later on. So now I'll show you step-by-step -step guide on creating a login credentials on webs. So first you need to go to the website and then click on the sign in red button at the top right corner. Then you'll have this login page. Instead of putting in your information that you've submitted already during web application, please go down and clean, um, click on sign up now. So this will take you to the registration page where you can create your account. So in the, um, in the registration page, fill out the registration form. So again, you have to use one of the emails that you have provided when you apply to become a web signatories. Um, other email addresses would not work at this point. Um, so once you put in your email address and click on send verification code button, this red button, then you'll receive a verification code in your email inbox. So please use that code to continue with the registration process. This is to verify that um, the email is matching the information that you provided when you signed up. Then after you're done, you can immediately log in and start using your account. To see the page like the one um, shown on the screen, please click on the My Account um, at the top right corner on the page. So you can see what you could do. You can edit your profile page, take the GRP assessment tool that Ferosa just walk us through, or start reporting. And more functions are to be added in the future. So I will give you a bonus tip on how to add additional emails by going to the Edit Company profile page. Um, it's related to what Verosa mentioned on uh, nominating a, uh, additional emails to uh, be able to use this tool. So you can click on edit company profile page. And then when you're there, scroll down until you see this box called extra email. So you can then put in and insert these email and save. Then you can create login accounts using that extra email you've created by going through the same process I just explained. So it's a pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, moving on, um, I'll tell you how to report on webs.org website. So before doing that, um, I prepared a uh, short slide on web transparency and accountability framework, which you can find in web's resources page that Amy showed you. So the web's transparency and accountability uh, frameworks uh, provides companies with a holistic set of indicators that are most likely to advance gender equality across corporate value chains aligned with um, existing corporate gender equality frameworks. 
So there are five types of indicators and they are designed to provide companies um, on indicators for workplace, marketplace, and community. So we have baseline indicators that you fill in, <clears throat> essential indicators that you are encouraged to report on. Then we have complementary indicators, inputs and support measure indicators, and additional indicator that, um, <clears throat> that reinforces um, um, different type of indicators. So since 2020, um, new applicants to the web are required to share three to uh, four baseline indicators, depending on if you're a asset owner or not. So you probably filled those out when you wanted to become a web signatories, um, if you are a recent signatory. So we are collecting data on percentage of women employees, percentage of women in management level, percentage of women on boards, executive and partners. And if your company is an asset owner, you'll get an additional question that's asking for the percentage of women on investment committees. So then once you become a signatories, uh, we are encouraging you to report on these eight indicators um, that's shown on the screens. So again, it's not mandatory, but you are encouraged to report on your progress. So you can share your result privately with the web secretariat only or report publicly. So currently we have uh, many signatories reporting privately, but we are encouraging companies to report publicly. So these are eight indicators and let me quickly walk you through on the definition or how to cal and how to calculate. So the first one, percentage of women and men employees as a percentage of total number of employees. This meaning employees um, including first permanently contracted and second, temporarily contracted, such as seasonal workers on a full-time equivalent basis. So you're basically counting all the full-time equivalent companies when you're um, <coughs> calculating for this percentage. Then to calculate the percentage of full-time equivalent employees that are women, count the total number of uh, women employees and divide this number by total of uh, full employees. So the same calculation can be done for male employees. Then second one is on percentage of women and men in senior management position as a percentage of total number of um, senior managers in the organization. So the calculation is the same. Um, <clears throat> to calculate the percent of senior management who are women, um, you should divide the number of women senior major uh, managers by total number of senior managers. And here we are, um, we are defining senior managers as um, C-suite level or equivalent, like managing directors or partners. Then moving on, percentage of women and, and um, on the company board. Um, as you know, board members are defined as members who play a role in the board. And to calculate the percentage of the board, you should divide the number of women um, on the board by the number of total, uh, total board numbers. So these are pretty straightforward calculations. And then moving on to indicator number four, ratio of women salary to men salary. So women and men salaries include three components. Uh, the first one is fixed salary, a salary that a person receives on a stable or fixed basis that our uh, employee receive the same amount every month or every pay period. And then second one is additional pay. This is a salary that employees receive on a temporary basis, um, like performance bonus or compensation for um, extra expense that they had to incur. So this amount varies from month to month. And third one is variable salary, a salary that employees receive in recognition for their performance or overall um, result of the company or organization. So to calculate a woman's salary, by um, you need to add up all the salaries and divide them by the num um, by number of women. So the same calculation could be done by uh, for men as well. And then moving on, percentage of newly hired on full time equivalent employees, women and men, new hires, or um, we define them as um, they they were hired within the um, sixty consecutive days. And to calculate the new hire women employees, you should divide the number of new hired. Uh, by total number of um, new hired employees. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of mess equation here, but you'll figure it out and it's pretty straightforward. And then moving on to percentage of um, promotion and career opportunities. Definition of promotion or management is same as number two, C-suite or equivalent. And you can calculate a percentage here and then as well. And then I wanted to highlight on number seven, um, as we are taking closer look 
at the retention. So retention rate of women and men, <clears throat> full-time equivalent employees who took parent leave. So, you know, parental leave includes maternity leave, paternity leave, parental leave, and all kinds of adoption leave, and all the leave that's related to childcare. And the retention rate is determined by employees retained after the company 12 months after returning from patern um, um, parental leave. So to calculate the retention rate for women, divide the total number of women employees retained in the company um, or um, for 12 months after returning to work following a period of parental leave by the total number of women employees taking parental leave. So the um, same calculation can be done for men taking paternity, uh, parental leave. And then number eight is the most simple one. It's a yes or no. If your company has a confidential anonymous grievance resolution reporting on non-retaliation mechanism and procedures to address and respond to incidents or violence and harassment, you can click yes or no. So we are currently in the progress of adding more indicators to report on especially marketplace and community. Um, as you can see, these are majorly on the workplace issues. So please stay tuned. And you can learn about the metrics I just went through by, um, <clears throat> by looking for a web guide on the website called Web Guidance Note, how to report progress that can be uh, found again on web resources page. So before I tell you on how to report, let me briefly tell you why should you report. Right. So first and most importantly, reporting allows companies to uphold companies' commitment to gender equality in the workplace, marketplace, and community. So you've made the first step, the first great step by signing onto the webs, but as you probably recall, you're not done. You're just in the beginning of the journey. So you're on the journey, webs journey, and you're expected to continuously work toward that gender equality. So reporting helps you to guide you and motivate you to do better. So we actually had a company, we had a call with a company and they said that they do not report because they have zeros in everything. Oh, we have zero women in management, zero women in board, zero women in senior management, et cetera, everything zero. More so, you should report so that you receive zero, zero, zeros and that the leadership will notice one day and they're like, something is weird here. Let's do something about it. So it's really important for you to report, even if your score is um, not, you're not as proud about your score. Second, um, it's related to the first point. Reporting provides benchmarks and KPIs for companies to follow on their web's journey. Um, so companies may feel lost. I mean, that's natural. But these indicators that I just showed you um, could provide tangible goals to achieve and a direction to pursue for the company. Um, so these are why reporting is good internally, but also reporting is good for the company externally as well. So the webs team has been um, called more and more, and we've been approached more and more from the investors as they are taking as they are taking a closer look at the company's progress on ESG status, including gender equality and women's empowerment. So the investors are now realizing that gender equality is a matter of not only S, social, of the social aspect of the ESG, but also G, governance, as gender inequality could bring risks to governance of the company that's tangible threat for their return on investment. So show your progress by transparently reporting on your progress to the investors. Lastly, um, other stakeholders like potential employees, business partners and consumers and more are checking the company's status on gender equality. Again, transparency is key to communicate with other stakeholders, so please uh, do report. With that said, I'll finally move on to how to report. So first, go to webs.org and click on the sign in button at the top right corner. And hopefully by this time you will have an account, then you'll log in. Then go to my account. Then click on start reporting button, third one, the third red button at the bottom. And then you can report on your company's um, progress on the indicators that you want to report on. So I just showed you eight indicators. Again, um, you can, as you can see, these indicator does not have that red star thing next to it, meaning that these are not mandatory fields. So you can report on the any of the indicators you want as little as zero sadly, but or as many as eight um, to do it either privately or publicly by choosing an option for each indicators. 
So when you're done, please go down and don't forget to save, um, um, save using the save button at the bottom of the page. Then this is to show you how your profile page will look after you report publicly. So you will have this data underneath your basic company profile info on your web's profile page. So notice the length of these uh, report can vary depending on how many indicators you chose to report publicly. So you can see this person, uh, this company has decided to report on one, two, three, four, five, six, six indicators. So you're seeing six. And here they will only um, agree to do report on three. So you only see three. But I just wanted to highlight that we, um, we've introduced a new feature. So now we are featuring two years in a row as a comparison so that the companies can compare companies' progress over a different time period, over time. So we hope to see more companies reporting in 2023. Uh, and that was all from my side on the web's how-tos and hope you learned some useful tips on how to fully utilize the website.org website. And we have many more features planned for the future, so please stay, uh, please stay tuned. So I'm now going to hand the floor over to Amy to moderate the Q&A session. So Amy, over to you. Great, fantastic, great presentation, Miwa. Um, I think everybody's learning a lot today. And we do also have some great questions in the chat. Um, I'm just gonna read a few out that have been asked. Um, we should have time to cover all of them, but if you do have more, please just input them into the Q&A function. Um, so the first one I might pass um, also to Katya. Um, the first question, we're in the process of doing the gender gap assessment tool, the GAT for our organization, but we would like to have guidance on how we use the tool and begin implementing sort of creating actions. Yeah, thank you very much for, for that question. And it's good to, to make sure that there are actions in place um, after every assessment. So, um, what we do have is we have been working um, through some of our programming with companies directly um, together to help um, implementing some of the um, recommendations that came out of their assessments. Um, what we have not done, we have not kind of programmed some of these um, action plans. However, what my guidance would be, um, and Niva, please come in as well if you want to, but my guidance would be um, once you have um, taken the assessment tool and really identified your actions, really reach out uh, depending on which country offices you are in um, to um, you and women colleagues, there are always um, contacts on the, the website.org site as well. And we can guide you further because in some of the country offices, there might be programs that you could join into. Um, in some others, we might directly um, provide support to companies depending on what you want to do, a, a real program or just getting some guidance. So I think it's more at the um, company per company case for the moment. Um, however, in the long term, we are trying to really um, institutionalize a much more systemic approach to provide um, support to um, web signatories as well, but that is in the, the make for the moment. Great, great. Okay, another question we had that came in that um, for Rosa might be best for you was, will the score depicted in the GRP tool provide guidance on the actions that companies can take for the way forward? Amy, um, at this point of time, we have multiple resources available on webs.org for the actions that you can take. However, we do plan that when you, when you have your scores, we will be linking it to the specific action planning tools that we have um, for you to then plan out a, a, se a separate pathway to actually improving your score over time. Um, but all of these resources as of now are available um, very much on webs.org. Great, fantastic. Um, one question I might answer quickly because I see is how often should you uh, should you be reporting? I think um, generally we we advocate for reporting once a year so that you can update yearly. Um, I it, it does take changes a time some time to make significant changes. So I think um, generally we would advise once a year. Okay, another great question I see that's come up kind of twice, um, and which is a, a valid point, is that the webs are fairly gender binary. Um, are we planning to expand the language to be more inclusive? And when we have questions like a male and female staff, how do we calculate this for staff who do not identify as either um, male or female? I don't know, Miwa, if you wanna take this or Katya. Yeah, I can okay. take it and then I can leave it to Katja to enter. So actually at the secretariat, 
um, global head Anna was saying um, women's empowerment principle is called women's empowerment principle because it was developed in um, you know 2010 and um, it made sense for uh, us to call it then. But if we are to rename it, we would name it something else because we're not only advocating for women, but also full gender equality. And we do uh, acknowledge um, for the fact um, that uh, now we cannot only have binary answer for men or women. Unfortunately, at that given time, we are um, we all, we have calculated um, developed at um, this transparency and accountability framework has been developed. We are only calculating for binary answer, but um, it's a living document. And as I said, we are trying to input. Um, we are trying to introduce more um, indicators on marketplace and community. And in, during that discussion, we are actually actively discussing how do we um, calculate and how do we capture the data for people who do not identify neither men or women. So, um, so we do have female or male. So we do have that discussion actively going on. So please stay tuned. And if you have any suggestions, please send it to us so we um we can be informed as well. And Katja, would you like to add on to that? I can just maybe give one um, example, um, not on the, the binary side of things, but on diversity in, in general. So for example, when we started developing the gender responsive procurement assessment tool, which is a bit more recent, um, originally, when we defined gender responsive procurement, we always had the dimension on sourcing from women owned businesses. But we have kind of expanded, and you will see when you take the tool also in sourcing from um, other minorities, for example. So we've really kind of cordoned out from people with disability or living with disabilities into ethnic minor minorities, etc. So I just want to say that it's not only the binary conversation, but also the more diversity in to all kind of different um, groups. So we are trying to embrace um, in everything what is newly developed. Um, a much more conscious um, choice. And also very interestingly, what I think is the beauty of the WEBS community, we actually learn a lot also from progressive companies that are doing um, and are more advanced in some of the, the areas that we, we are in terms of the mm -hmm. tools they are using. So we're trying to take this and embrace this and everything while we develop new. So I think the WEBS community is also not just you and women or you're in global compact giving sort of um, to the community, but we are also taking and trying to make available the knowledge, which is um, there's a wealth of knowledge um, in that 8,000 companies that have signed the, the web. So um, please keep sharing um, these um, thoughts from your end as yeah. well. Great. Great. Okay, another question that's popped up on reporting. To respond to the eight essential indicators, we can follow the GRI calcula calculation methodology, correct? Um, so the I, I think the guidance document that a lot of you probably have on how to report progress has a little bit of detail on methodology. I'm also going to share in the chat um, there is also a longer document, a transparency and accountability framework um, that was the basis for the reporting document that basically lays out a full set um, of a, a full m &E framework, if you like, for the all of the webs. So the eight essential indicators are, are currently available to report on on webs.org, but this transparency and accountability framework currently sets out eight essential and then some complementary and then input measures. In this bigger document, um, you can find some notes on methodology. And a lot of this was based on GRI and other global reporting standards. So in essence, um, it's very well aligned, but you can also find more detail on the methodology in the document I just put into the chat. Okay, um, another person asked, yes, if we share the slides, yes, we'll definitely be sharing um, the slides and the recording after, don't worry. Um, another question, we, we have, our company has two sites. One site is mixed with gender while the other is 100% woman-based, but if we calculate the overall percentage of women employees, then it's not significant. So should you report just for one site or, or and report separately or combine the data? Um, if they're both in the same country, I think we would advise that you combine and report that overall, um, because it still does represent the organization overall of where you stand. Um, and so if you're kind of one entity that would be taking the assessment tool for both of those sites combined, then we would, we would advise to combine the data um, instead of reporting separately. Okay, one more chat, uh, one more question in the chat now. Um, it's just a great question. Is there any literature on how the WEPs and the UN SDG goals are aligned or can be aligned? Certain parts of the business are more focused on achieving SDG goals for the S 
in ESG. So how can we best include the WEPs as part of that? This is a great question. Would anyone like to take this? I can take on the more theoretical point of view as we had a similar discussion with uh, standard setters. So we have discussed is gender equality a materiality issue for all the businesses, meaning that is it important for all the businesses? And we, of course, at the UN Women Webs, we say, yes, it is. I mean, you're looking at different SDG goals and you wanted to achieve on, let's say, climate issues and you need to take into the impact that your company could bring in reducing carbon and et cetera when it comes to gender equality um, and when it, when it comes to your workplace um, um, your practices and your policies at the same time as what, what impact you could have on their marketplace. So you can definitely directly link. I cannot think from my top on top of my head on any literature that's directly related, but we do have resources on how different thematic areas can be um, a web is dealing with different thematic areas like the climate change I just said, renewable energy. So you can actually see different sectoral or different um, approaches on uh, webs.org and you can obviously link these to SDG goals that your company is working on. So it's a pretty, we, we offer pretty flexible guidance and it could be applicable. And if you're trying to see with that lens of materiality, gender equality can be materiality for all different sectors and all different um, SDG goals that you are trying to achieve. And major thing that what we are doing at UN Women is to put that gender equality um, SDG goal number five um, as a lens for all the other set of 16 um, SDG goals. So if you, if anyone else have anything else to add, um, please do so. And then I can see that Peros had shared the web's guidance tool that I explained. So it's a further um, explanation for you. I think maybe you have to, to add on that. I think for a company, to, for a first step, if you were to take a very simplistic approach and sort of make the web as an equal to um, achieving gender equality, there's quite some publications out there on um, putting the SDG 5 very central and looking on how does it contribute to a decent work um, provision, for example, um, SDG 8, um, how it links to climate, etc. So I think this could be the first sort of starting point and there's a lot of existing literature if you Google this and we can put um, in the region we have a, a great report together with the Asian Development Bank on um, on how to gender equality delivers um, on the SDG so we can share that as well but I think that's the first good starting point and then you can see on how the webs as a mean to achieve this SDG 5 can play a role within that but I think that will be my first guidance to, to go that, that route. Great. Okay, we have no more questions in the Q&A. We, we do have six minutes left. If anyone else would like to type a question in the, in the Q&A. Oh, I see one more question. Okay, and then we, um, yes, we will be sharing the slides. Great. Okay, great. Okay, uh, back to you, Miwa, I think for the final sections. Perfect, thank you so much, Amy. And thank you for all these questions. And um, I've actually never ended webinar early, but then it means that you can have extra three minutes for you to enjoy before your next call. So I'd like to invite Katja for um, some closing remark, then we can um, we can close this meeting. Thank you all. Katja, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you everyone for, for joining. There's not gonna be a lot of remarks. I think I've spoken up also in the Q&A, <laughs> but I just wanted to um, say how great it is to actually have such a, an audience that has very um, technically also high level questions to us, which is really um, important to make sure that we um, continue to improve and really to make this a vibrant um, community of um, web signatories. So a huge thank you from um, our side and please really feel free um, to, to connect. And if you have more questions, reach out. I think that would be really great from our side because we're doing these sessions um, across different time zones, as we said. We have a very mini survey, um, which um, we will hopefully put on the screen very quickly. Um, for after we close, it'll after pop up. After we close, it will sort of, uh, pop up. So if you could please take also um, the time to just fill this um, out because it really will help us to 
to strengthen the content. And this is hopefully for you also a first session and um, stay tuned also on some of the deeper dive sessions that we put always on the, the website on webs.org in terms of specific tr trainings on uh, GRP, for example, or other areas. So please um, feel free to join. And yeah, thank you very much again um, for joining us um, here on this time zone and publicize or share also with your colleagues that there is um, another webinar introduction call today um, ongoing, maybe for colleagues in other time um, zones from your the same company. So please um, join us as well. And thank you very much to Miva and the team actually for organizing all of this um, great session. Even I learned quite a, a lot um, on this as well. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.